Today we are at the Nürburgreen Nordschleife Industry Fahten and we're in the Ferrari 488i GT3 car. This is the car that's run on the Industry Fahten Fun series in iRacing, which as you can see this is indeed iRacing. So today we are going to learn da -da -da, the Nürburgring, the whole track. No, we're not going to learn the whole track. But we are going to learn the beginning section starting at the pit down here and running all the way to the downhill section over here. Now this whole section through here can take between 50 seconds to a minute to go all the way through. And we are going to go through it slowly. I've pre-recorded just a quick section. I didn't go for speed. I just made sure to hit the corners safely and stably and that's ideally what you're going to be shooting for. We're not going to be racing it per se as we are just memorizing it and being able to go through it safely. So let me clear off this whiteboard and I will show you the section of the track that we are going to be learning. Now again the pits are right through here. We're actually parked right here facing north and you're gonna come out and do a hard left into merge straight into traffic and one thing you need to remember for this as we're merging into traffic do not pull off into somebody's path if there's another car on the track wait wait for them to pass come out you need to be checking your mirrors you need to be checking your relative box the lap times here can take between six and ten minutes if somebody does their out lap and they take 10 minutes to go around because they're being careful and they get to their hot lap and they go right into turn one and you pull out in front of them and cause them to wreck you've wasted 10 minutes of their time so if you don't want to get yelled at just be sure not to pull out in front of people so this section that we're going to be learning is basically broken into two sections and I'd say, eh, no, not right there. I'd say this is one section, and then the back straight section is this section. So well, you could technically or theoretically even break this down further, but because it's only a minute long, I think we should be able to get through this just fine. So I'm going to dump this whiteboard out and let's see what this looks like so I'm gonna pause it right here and rewind it so you can see this this is a very important thing to know about this car as you're going from neutral into first and accelerating out the car will bog down it'll seem like it's chugging along it'll go and what that sound is and what's happening is the engine is giving too much power to the tires and the traction control is cutting in to keep the tires from slipping. So to prevent that, what you have to do is when you go into first gear and you're pulling out, initially you want to clutch in and get the RPMs up and then release the clutch slowly so it bites. But then once you do that, you throttle it back down to 1.5 RPMs-ish. Um, and that'll be the optimal acceleration. If you run the clutch, you can just clutch it and keep the RPMs up so that you know the power is not transferring to the tires. But this seems to work. So as you can see through there, the RPMs stay between the one and two on the bar. And this exit out of the pits is extremely tight it may take you a few times to get it just right if you bend it into one of these walls right away just keep driving and pull off to the side that way if somebody's coming in behind you you don't get rear-ended and ruin their lap because we're accelerating up out of this pit you can generally get to the first turn as if you were in second gear Ideally, if you had run the whole track and you came around the corner behind us and you were accelerating here, you would be braking at the red section of the end of the pit 
as you can see on the outside rail it's painted red as soon as you get to that you would be breaking down into second gear to take the first turn so we're accelerating up to second gear to take the turn and ideally the turn will be taken about the same depending it doesn't matter if you're ending a lap or if you're beginning a lap So we're going to push out to the outside curves on the right hand side and then we're going to float all the way to the left we're accelerating up to fourth gear and you can see there is a two kilometer sign on the left generally speaking there are three obvious brake marks on this track one is a sign if you're coming around a turn there's a sign there you probably should have been starting your braking at the sign two brake marks on the track. If you are driving and you come across a bunch of brake marks, people are braking for a reason. You should be braking. Three, pavement change. Pavement change happens where they come back and they put in new pavement because everybody's braking has added force that has pulled the pavement and caused it to be bumpy. So then they come back and they relevel it and that creates a new pavement line. So with those three things in mind, keep your eye out for what you think would be a good brake mark as we come through these corners. For this first one, it's not really even a braking, it's just you're transferring the weight of the car forward. It's just a very, very subtle turn. Let me turn on the, uh, the track map again so you can see. Let's see, that'd be this one. So we are we are coming up on this turn right through here so we came out and we crested and we cut across and we're floating to the outside and then we're gonna break through here through this turn and gas up and out through here making sure to stay as far to the outside of this right hand side as possible So as you can see, if you look at the bottom left of the screen, it's not even a full brake, it's just a little bit of uh, dragging the brake to get the car to transfer weight forward. And as soon as we get the car turned in, we're gassing out. It may seem like you need to brake for this turn, but you don't. It's You're still accelerating to fifth. Making sure to get all the way to the right hand side. This is probably the trickiest turn of the beginning of this track. It's a double brake zone turn. So you brake, you lift a little bit, you turn into the left, you brake some more. Make sure you hit your shifts as you're downshifting. If you miss one of these shifts, the car can carry too much momentum through and you'll slide off the track. So this next set of turns, is it seems like you should be braking for them, but the car's got a lot of downforce, so you don't really need to be braking. You may need the lift to get the car to turn in, but for the most part, you're just accelerating up and out, especially through this turn through here. It really feels like you need to be braking and drop it into second, but in a race situation, you'll get rear-ended because there's not, you can't go to the outside to pass somebody on this turn. So just accelerate up and out, and then when you get to the end right here where the curbs are, you'll break it down into second and drift it down around. You can actually carry the third up and around this turn, but make sure that you're lifting off. If you check the gas in the bottom left, I'm braking a little bit. I'm not gassing, and I'm not going to gas until we come out the other side unless I need to straighten the car. So I did just a little bit of gas right between the two to make sure the car was going straight. So I can get the car going straight and then break it down. And as soon as I break down, I drop it to second. And we gas out and then we get all the way to the left. So at those curbs, we're going to break a little bit again, get the back end to kick out and turn it to the right. And this is again, there are a bunch of little S turns. So you gotta turn in and get over. 
you can get a little bit of that curb. You'll see I hit a little bit of that curb. You can take the car all the way up onto the concrete blocking there, and it, it won't slow you down. With a lot of cars, it's actually faster to cut this curb. But as soon as we get around, we're, this is onto that straight section. So we are going to be gassing all the way up. There's a hill here with a dip up the other side. I don't think you have to lift for this car. At the top of this hill, you'll get a little bit of air. You don't have to lift with these cars. They've got traction control. If you got the traction control turned off, I would suggest lifting, at least do a half lift to keep the car from overspinning the tires on when you hit the ground. But this turn is extremely important to keep all of your speed through it. This turn goes on to that back straight section. So in order to keep your speed, we're going to lift a little bit early to let the car settle. And then we're going to brake a little bit to transfer the weight forward. And we're going to turn in early and get as close to that curb as possible. We don't want to hit the curb. If we hit the curb, it's going to unsettle the car. The car is going to drift left and put us into the grass. So what we want to do is get as close to the curb as possible without touching it. And as soon as we get the car straight again, we're going to start accelerating up out of fourth. And I may not have mentioned it, but I'm in fifth here. When I get the car turned in, I'm probably going to dump it down to fourth and then start accelerating just to get that higher RPM pull. You couldn't see the change because the hand was in the way. But there is a shift from 5th down to 4th. You can hear it right there as it pings a little bit. And then this whole section here, even though it's got some turns in it, it's basically a straight. So we're going to be gassing all the way up into 6th. Just to show you what this looks like at speed, uh, it does come at you kind of all at once. But it's really not a hard or complicated turn. The car wants to drive stable through there as long as you don't hit the curb or something. And as you can see, we're in sixth. The RPM lights are flashing. Our speed is 169. We're basically at full speed when we come to this. And as you approach, you're going to notice a few things. You're going to notice, one, there are signs right here. Two, there is a concrete change. There's a clear section where they've come back and they've replaced this concrete two, three, four times even. It goes light, dark, light, dark. And on top of that, as soon as you get to that concrete change, there are brake marks. So it's very obvious that you're going to be braking a little bit here. Now this is at very high speeds and you may think that you're gonna need like really break it and drop it down to fifth or fourth but if we go back and we look at uh, the whiteboard you'll see that it's really it's not that big of a turn what we're the car is right here the turn in mark is right here that's not a very steep turn but we do have to break a little bit to keep the car where we want it to be positioned on the track if you don't break and you just gas through at sixth gear, the car is going to want to understeer and you'll slide off the right hand side of the track and we don't want that. So when we get up to these signs, maybe a car length, half a car length before we get to these signs, we're going to brake just a little bit just to get the momentum of the car shifting forward, the weight to shift forward and then we can turn in. And when we do this, we're going to try to stay as far to the left as possible. Depending on how you come in, to this turn you will actually get a little bit of air with some of your tires and you can really feel the car rotate in the air because you're you're going into a left hand turn the car jumps up the car jumps into the air it rotates just a little bit comes back down and snaps back to the right so you have to be careful not to let that startle you and cause you to let the car drift out As you can see, we 
basically kept it as far to the left as possible, right on the bumper strip. And as soon as I feel the car set back down, and if you watch the braking and the gas in the bottom left, the car gets airborne, it comes back down. As soon as it gets back on the ground, I'm gassing again. And then we've got another situation. As soon as I get back on the gas, we've got a concrete change. The only reason that there's a concrete change is they've replaced the concrete, which means something has happened to this concrete to make, make them need to change it. And what's happened here, it's obvious that this is a braking zone. So as soon as we hit that concrete, we're braking. We're braking in a very straight line all the tires on the on the ground and you can see I've got my traction control turned down a few notches so you can see these uh, purple lights come on they're showing the rear and front tires starting to lose traction and we're gonna break down to second and then just coast right around this turn and we're out and about And that's the whole first section. So we're going to rewind it so you can see it at speed all in one go without me talking. And keep in mind, this isn't the fastest you can go through here. This is just a stable first pass to get you so you can see the turns so you know where you need to be braking, where you need to be putting the car. As soon as you get the track, in your mind and you've memorized it then you can start working on your speed that's the whole first section it's probably less than 60 seconds total time it's not that many corners and once you get this section we can do the next section and I think you could probably do the whole track in about three or four of these small sections and the reason that I picked these sections are because let me bring the 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 map back up it's mostly Oh shit, where is that? There it is. Okay, so, as you can see, the track has like 156 corners, 150 something, 150, oh there it is, it's 14.17 miles with 154 turns. That's too much to learn in one go. And because the corners are so far between each other, what's happening is you don't have time to learn the corner before you overload with the next few sets of corners so you need to just drive the course and ideally in real life or in another game you would drive real slow around the course and you'd learn a first section you'd add another corner another two corners but what we're gonna do is we're gonna learn it in sectors and it's not the sectors that everybody uh, like there's like 30 something sectors and I don't know exactly where they are but as you can see these these sections there has straights that you can you can 
use and each of these straights makes for a very good intermission or stopping point so in this case we're probably going to try to hit this in three I'd want to say almost that we do this in four sections because this middle section through here is probably the hardest section on the track and it's just an overload so if we can get this section and this section and that section and then the last section I think we should be okay and if you split it up like this cutting in you know a seven minute track into four it's not as bad as you think it's just like learning a normal track that's a minute and 30 seconds long now one thing I will also like to point out through here is there is an option in the let me clear this out real quick and we'll leave the whiteboard on but we'll close this out if you go to the options you'll notice that uh, let me see what page is that on oh yeah it's right here so on the main drive tab there is an option for let me circle it entering exit tow car that's basically the same as holding the escape but holding the escape takes you straight to the pit because this track is so large each of the sectors has a starting point programmed into the track so if you put this button on your wheel or program it to the keyboard if you hit that button it will take you to the beginning of the last sector you cross through and what this does is it lets you practice specific turn sections without having to drive the whole track which is very useful but other than that that's pretty much it hopefully that video helped you a little bit if not too bad